But, but I'm confused. I thought the energy was in the pies. Yeah, I'm going to talk about energy. Oh, also. I forgot the A stands for. Uh, yeah, the acceleration or how yeah. hard gravity was pulling. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we have three different parts that are representing the energy stored in the spring and yeah if you guys think about this there are two variables that represent the energy stored in the spring what are they what are the variables that determine how much energy is stored in the spring we have two variables here that determine the what the change in x what is that yeah, what, what is that? Change in X, what, what is, how do you call that? X back. Change in stretch. The stretch. Okay, we have one. One variable would be the stretch. Thank you, Agri. Jane. What, what else? The mass. Yeah, the mass, right? But do we look at mass or something else? Right. Well, we actually have three variables, though, but let's say two variables in this case. Force. Force force right we have the length and the force and these two variables actually determine how much energy is stored in the spring but if we think about the force there are also two variables in the force what are they there are two variables in the force as well right the mass and uh, i forgot the a stands for uh, yeah the acceleration or how hard gravity was pulling I knew that. yeah yeah <laughs> how hard gravity was pulling down but if you consider the force of our arm, let's say we just stretch the spring using our arm, then there will be one variable, which is the force of our arm, right? But if we, if we put the mass on it, then there will be two variables, the mass and how hard gravity was pulling it down. Okay, so we have two variables that determine how much energy is stored in the spring, and that would be the force and the stretch. So if you guys think about this, it turns out that if you want to figure out how much energy is stored in the spring, we need to think about the stretch and also about the force, right? So I'm gonna write the equation here to represent how much energy is stored in the spring. But, but I'm confused, I thought the energy was in the pies. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about it. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm gonna show you an equation first, then we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna write equation E El, which is stand for elastic energy, El is equal to one and a half times the force and time the stretch or delta x. And you may be wondering, how do we get this formula, right? How do we get this formula? One and a half force time delta x. Let's say we want to stretch the spring into 0.5 meter, then the area between this line and this line would be the amount of energy stored in the spring. So I'm gonna just say this, say. Is that what I said? Yeah. I'm setting this to represent the area under the spring. And how do you find the area under this graph? This is like the triangle. This is triangle, right? So I will say that in order to find the area of triangle, is to what? Base times height. Base times height. We have base and height, right? And then to find the area is to multiply base times height divided by 2. And in this graph, which one would be our base? X. X. Okay, so I'm just gonna replace this. Base would be our delta X. And which one would be our height? Force. So delta X times force. And then divided by 2, right? Or I'm gonna rearrange this to A is equal to one and a half times F times delta X, which is basically the same as this one. So remember that last time I said, it turns out that the amount of energy stored in the spring is basically the area under the, the graph. 